All right, just making sure everything is working as always. Stream looks okay-ish. Let's hide that for now. Uh, hide layer. So, we're back at it again. This time looking into a new project because last time we've been looking at uh, the 15 puzzle with Felice and we kind of done with that and today I want to do something else, something new. And so for some reason I have bad network. Uh, it looks good, just let me wait for it to stabilize a little bit. If there is any issue just let me know in the chat please, that would be nice. Alright, so today we have on the menu is a little project to work with OpenAPI and uh, I want to build something that looks like Snowflake uh, which is what I did last couple of streams a long time ago. I basically dropped streaming the project and just started working on it because at some point it was just overwhelming to both stream and build the thing because it was quite complicated. But I've been developing it ever since, ever since like a year or something right now. And it works quite well. So um, I want to build something that looks like it with Fable support and .NET support because this is the thing that is currently missing from the current open API type provider. Uh, not only they don't work with Fable, uh, I kind of want to build a, a code generation uh, variant of it. So let's see how that goes. Hi there, Dimitri, good to see you again. By the way, I... Um, I'm working on getting the videos up to to YouTube. I've been just uh, downloading some kind of uh, editing tools to remove the beginning and the end of the stream because it starts with me checking that everything is correct and that everything is working. So that's something I'm uh, working on. Uh, but for today, let's let's see how this goes. It's a brand new project. Uh, what I want to look at. Uh, do you need any help on that? Um, thanks a lot. I don't think so yet. Uh, my editing skills are very limited, but I think I could manage because I've been using, uh, learning how to use this tool called OpenShot. It's a, it's a video editor, and I've already making some some tests to cut out basically some parts of the video from left and the right, and it works quite nicely. It's very intuitive. Uh, I've been learning how to use it, so I think I'm I'm gonna try that. If I have trouble or I need some more advanced tricks, I'll definitely let you know. Thanks for asking. All right, I still see that my network is unstable for some reason. Is everything okay? Do you hear? Is the sound good? Is the video good? Let me know. Okay, anyway, so what I wanted to look at today is the open API. So if we go to, let's see, open API provider F sharp. And I think it's done by Sergey, the guy who, uh, uh, the guy who does F sharp weekly. It looks pretty solid. If I, sh if I must say that, let's, uh, let's look at the docs because, okay, I think they're part of the swagger provider, right? Uh, provider, yeah, there you go. So this is the project. There are two providers in this NuGet. One is the Open API client provider, which is kind of what we want. I'll show you in a bit. Uh, and there's also the Swagger client provider. I think Swagger is a more specific version of the Open API spec. So if we make sure that this works it should be fine uh, this application uses microsoft open api readers to parse the schema so i think we could use that as well except that we will generate code uh, generate f sharp code from that schema i 
Hi there. Thank you. Thanks for uh, checking. Okay, I see that it has stabilized. That's great. Cool. So yeah, this is the project. It, it looks pretty nice, if I must say. So you have a JSON uh, adjacent file somewhere on the internet or local, and it has the schema from which you can create the client. Pretty interesting so far. So you get a type called pet store and from there you can create a client and then you can start doing stuff with it. It looks like it's supported in all IDEs, so that's great. Uh, I was looking through it and I saw some, yeah, for example, yeah, let's look at this sample. So I'll just open up the swagger text. Of course, you can do anything about it here. So if you go JSON viewer, I think if you've seen me do the snowflake parts, you've seen me also do this. So I'll just copy this text. I'm j I just want to visualize the text better. So yeah, this is how it looks like. Uh, I think that's much better. So we have uh, which version of Swagger, some information about the API. Uh, we also have the schema, oh, no, the, sch the schemes, this is just for HTTP or SSL. Okay, we have paths, and each path, I think, describes an operation ID. So, these operation IDs are what get generated into the client. So, I see here, for example, add pet and get pet by ID are both... Um, I think these are operations. Let me let me just check. So get pet by ID would be this one, right? Yeah, get pet by ID. This is this operation, and it looks like it was turned into a request, which is async. So this is another thing that we could do. Uh, we choose to either go async or task. But uh, let's try to figure out what this is doing, right? So yeah, this is very interesting because uh, the one thing I found weird when I'm looking at the sample, and this could uh, this could uh, be because of uh, because of the quality of the API that the the provider is making something weird. And the weird thing about it is that if you create a pet instance, the ID is provided here. I find that a bit weird because if you're creating an instance of something that was not created by the API, you shouldn't need to provide an ID. I guess it's just the example here because we will use it when we get the pet back. But I, th I find it weird that when you create an instance of something yet to be created on the back end or the service or the API, whatever you want to call it, that you also have to provide the ID here as well. I was expecting more that you have to provide the name and somehow after you add the pet you get the pet back from here um but like i said this could be a, uh, this could uh, be because of uh because of the quality of the api itself like what it return the generated types are of course restricted by uh what the schema provides so some schemas will be better than others When dealing with that, so I already see that Pet Store has a nice prefer async parameter, in which case it will generate async calls instead of task, which is kind of neat. This is um, this is actually a is an issue I have on Snowflake. If anyone is interested, you can implement async handling to either go async or task. Right now it's just async because it's both for Fable and F Sharp and I kind of made sure they look the same. So currently it's just async, but you could also do task. So yeah, this is the idea. Uh, we have a bunch of operation IDs which we can uh, put into a single class. The class might either take in like a, an HTTP client, for example. Uh, but I also have to uh, figure out how to do the Fable support, in which case we change the serialization libraries and we change the HTTP libraries. 
All right, so far so good. As always, I'll be looking at the chat to see if there's any questions, anything arises. So yeah, um, maybe it's um, maybe it would be cool to show you how Snowflake looks like as an example of, a, of what I'm trying to make. So the equivalent of a uh, of a type provider, how that would look like from a CLI tool point of view. Let's make sure I'm latest. I think I am. Yep. Open up code. All right, so this is the latest version. Um, and I could actually run it against this. So basically, Snowflake is a CLI tool, and that's what I want to build here as well. A CLI tool that uh, you CD up into a directory where there's a configuration file. For example, in this, in this example, the configuration is JSON, and you tell it where is the schema. You tell it what the project name should look like and the output. I think we will need at a minimum these three in the configuration that we're trying to build uh, because we want to know where the schema is, uh, what the namespace, the generated namespace should look like that contains the types, the clients, etc. etc. and the outputs. Uh, Snowflake has more options, for example, whether to emit metadata, whether to generate shared project so let me just like uh, run it so if i go source.net run and then just no uh, so i run it and give and tell it that the configuration file i think i could just run it and it will figure out that i'm looking at this snowflake file yeah so when i run snowflake it will uh, read the schema from this file of course because this is GraphQL it does a lot more work uh, because it's more complicated but more strict so this is nice but uh, I'm hoping we could get nice a nice types from the open API scheme as well so basically it's a CLI tool a console app essentially you run it uh, in a directory that has the configuration and it will generate uh, it will, in this case, well, it will validate the type. Snowflake needs to, ex you need to tell Snowflake explicitly to generate, in which case it will generate the output file. So yeah, it does validation, and when it's done, it will generate a Fable project, like this one. So it generated all these all these files. Well, I guess we have some leftovers from from previous runs that include .NET and Fable separately, but basically it's those types, right? So he, here I have the global types, uh, the generated client, which has everything HTTP and JSON related, um, and then pair query or pair operation, so to speak, we have a specific shape for the output result. So yeah, this is what I want to build. And this is also the reason why I haven't made Snowflake into a Myriad plugin. So Myriad is a tool that allows uh, that allows for compile time code generation. Uh, let me look at it. So Myriad, yeah. So this is a really cool tool that allows code generation for F# -sharp and it's done. It's basically a better replacement for type providers. It's everything that prov type providers can do, but better, right? It can generate code, it can generate lots of stuff, except that I wasn't very happy about the way it consumed, it, the way the users have to use it, uh, namely by, by changing the configuration in the project file. And uh, the limitations of it is that you cannot, still cannot generate a project, a full project with dependencies, which is kind of what I want. I want to generate a project, a client project, not just a couple of files, source files, no, the entire project with dependencies and without the, without the user having to install them separately or having to know which versions they require. So these versions, these are static and they come from the, yeah, Snowflake basically decides what versions should be used of these, uh, of these packages. And that's what I wanted to build. 
So yeah, that's basically the idea. I think I'll keep Snowflake open for a while uh, here because uh, because I want to steal a couple of code from here later, uh, namely when uh, looking at the types. Because yeah, because uh, other than the paths, we also have definitions, which are types that are referenced in the paths. So for example, okay, let's look at pet. And pet is an object, okay, which means we make it into our record. And it has two required fields, the name and the photo URL, the photo URLs. And the properties will be those where name and photo URLs are required, which is why when adding a new, when constructing a new pet, the ID was actually optional which is why like in the client here it was uh, it was optional i think we could just say the id is none in this case and then we will have to uh, query all pets and get the last added one but again i'm not sure you could actually do that in here there's no method that gets the latest added ones there's also status which is also an interesting one because it's not just a string it's an enum and I think we can make nice enums from this one as well. So nice discriminated unions. I'm not sure uh, the type provider does this uh, with, with enums. Uh, moreover, the XMLs, I don't think we will work with XML. I don't think we will generate anything XML related. Uh, JSON will be the way to go both for the F sharp and for the Fable client. Okay, so um, that was a little bit of introduction. Of course, this is Swagger 2.0, so I'm guessing the new, uh, the new specs have more definitions and more things to consider uh, than just those. So I'm interested to see how far we go. Okay, so are, there, are those always objects? Let's just look at them. Yeah, they, they look like they're always objects. So when, when it comes to definitions. All right. Okay, so far so good. Let's, uh, let's start from scratch. So Mictor, I was thinking of a name and first I thought we call it ham because it's the open API specs and spec means bacon in Dutch. But when I thought of ham, I also thought of Hawaii because of the pizza. So it's very silly. Okay, but let's just go with it. I might, might change it later. So .NET new console. Uh Oh, that's not good. Net console lang F sharp. I think my laptop's having memory problems. Is everything good so far? Yeah, this looks good. All right. Okay, I'll just ignore that. Hope that it works. Uh, I think because when my uh, memory finishes, yeah, I'm almost out of memory here. And I think it starts to use, when I'm using RAM and I'm out of RAM. It starts using the 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 disk space, and sometimes even the disk space is is a bit uh, is a bit too much. So you know what? I'm just going to delete some of those while wow, it's working. Okay. All right. I think it's also because I have Snowflake running in here. Okay. I'll just uh, remove that. Go back here. Open up the project. Okay, looks good. This is hello world, of course. Let me go here and install the open API reader. I'm wondering what type of API I will get. I hope nothing horrendous. Okay.
Okay, that's uh, that's the library. I haven't haven't looked at the API, so I'll just go Microsoft. No, not this mic. Yeah, this one. Um, open API. What else do we have? Just gonna open up a bunch of random ones. Um, maybe models. Maybe. Okay. Let's go like this. Let's say schema for testing because uh, I'm not going to make everything configurable today. I just want to make uh, generate a bunch of types and see how that goes. So the schema will be the pet store. You could imagine that later on there will be a file called hawaii.json and it has a schema thingy called that points to the schema. But for now, it's just this. Let's go and look at the API here. I already looked at it, project site. All right, useful object model for open API documents. That's great. Okay, this is how you generate the document, but I want to parse it. Um, reading and writing. Yeah, something like that, because it needs a stream. Um, okay, we can get one. This is document, stream reader, read, okay. And output string, okay. So here it's reading a V3 of the YAML and, return, and turning it into JSON. That's cool. Um, so an open API stream reader, okay. Well, let's go like let is new and what does this take? Okay, needs the readers. So far, so good. It has settings. Open API uh, document dot. Okay, when it reads, it reads an input. Okay, so a string is all, all it takes. Hmm. And I get an open document back. All right. Let me make a new client. HTTP. A new HTTP client. Open up system.net. That's right. Um, basically want to read this. Uh, that response would be client uh, get stream async because it wants a stream, right? And uh, just schema, why am I copy pasting? So it wants a schema, I get a task, in which case I'll do some ugliness async. Uh, await task async run synchronously. I'm not sure which is worse run synchronously or get result get awaiter. You tell me. Uh, it doesn't matter right now. I have a stream. Uh, which means I could say match new API. Can I do this? Uh, read response with okay I'll just do it in two goes make the stream reader and if reader read response with because it returns this by ref thingy and F sharp knows how to convert that into a match expression but let's see what kind of I think it was like this true diagnose ticks and then do something I 
How do you read this? By ref. Ah, so this is the document itself, okay? Oh, you could do this, okay? So just let these two. I always conflict, I confuse uh, by refs when you, for example, try to do int parse. Open API doc. Okay, that's, well, that's much, much easier. So this is the open API doc. And now I could look into it. Let's see what it has. Extensions, paths, components. All right, we are getting something. Um, let's let's print fn something. So print fn s open API document. Um, info description. All right, that's somewhere dot net run. A bit delay, uh, maybe because I uh, installed something that it delayed the network. Oh, there you go. Is it better now? Maybe. It looks okay-ish. Oh, by the way, let me uh, increase the size. So settings, 18 maybe. Yeah, that's much better even for me. All right, so this is the open API document and I'm getting something back, which is this description. Now I want to look at the components. I think I want to look at the components. Let's uh, open API documents, components, extensions. Okay, so we have paths and paths will have operation IDs, but I don't want to look at the operation IDs today. I just want to look at the definitions, um, which I think are part of the components, so like things like pet, open API response, things like that. Uh, parameters, request bodies, maybe. Uh, you know what? Let me just, uh, maybe it was easier to do this in a, uh, in a FSX file. But just for the sake of testing, I'll just debug it. And hope that F sharp will give me some nice results. Okay. Here we are. We have 14 paths components, we have two servers, yeah, one is the HTTP, one is the HTTPS, okay, we don't care about that, I think it's easier to do it in here, right? So open API, components, and schemas, I think this is what I want, oh, there you go, there you go. The schemas will be these types, the API response, category, pet, uh, these things. So if we look at the pet, and it's a schema. Okay, so we have also any of and all of, and I think those will be very interesting to map because we will map them into union cases, but that's for later. Uh, I've, I've been dealing with union cases in GraphQL with Snowflake, they are pretty, pretty horrendous to work with, uh, but the end results are, are nice. So figuring out how to build them might be a bit, uh, a bit complicated. For now, we'll just look at the simple stuff. So we have 
pet and pet will have probably too many properties as you would expect uh, when you don't have discriminated unions to describe a, to describe an object okay so you have a required set name of the URLs and you have the properties which is a dictionary of other schemas okay and those schemas will be additional properties allowed I need to see the type where can I see okay the format is this but where's the type should I only look at the format yeah the type is a string for integer and the integer is of type long okay 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 so where do we look components schemas and each schema will be uh, well it will be a dictionary of other open API schemas each of which have properties which are also schemas all right very interesting so what I want to do is generate a F sharp file that contains these uh, global types so to speak and then later we will look at the operation IDs from the paths. Uh, we could look at the paths later to figure out how we build the, gen the operation IDs. Yeah, it's this operation raw view. Okay, there's. Yeah, there, there you go. That's the upload file operation. Anyone else likes to explore APIs like this using a debugger? I always do, I did that in, in C Sharp and it, it works great. I don't know why some people say you don't need a debugger when doing functional programming. Not sure what type of programs you're writing. Let's go. So, all right. That's one program open api document let me make a project name as if i as if i was reading it from uh, the config so this is the pet store this is the project name which i will use as a namespace basically so the types will go into the namespace all right i think we can get into actual code generation now for which case yep yeah, thank you uh, code generation for which case we will use actually the same component that myriad uses and the same component that snowflake uses which is uh, fsast so fsast is a nice library which generates uh, which generates f sharp code from f sharp code and the nice thing about it is that you could give that code to Phantomas and it will and it will output nice nicely formatted uh, F-sharp code so that you don't have to play around with the indentation or where the comments should go, etc. etc. You could just put them into a nice structure like FSASD and um, be done with it. Uh, so we will use that. Let me useful links yeah this I think these links are old I'm not sure sample for printing out generated code with Pantomas yes uh, let me look at how I do it with snowflake like I said I will be stealing a lot of code from snowflake by the way if you're doing anything with if you're doing any client based work with with GraphQL and you need to talk to a GraphQL service with F Sharp. This is the project you you can use. I've been building it for quite some time now and it's quite solid to be honest. Um, so this works both for Fable and Fable and F Sharp where 
we're using this in production for Fable. In we're building reports using this. So we have a front end that is built with Fable and Felice that gets data from GraphQL API and makes nice charts with it. And the other use we have it currently is that we use it in Excel. So we use Excel DNA to embed F# -sharp code and that F# -sharp code calls GraphQL the same API. Uh, quite cool stuff. So yeah, with that, let's talk about CodeGen. CodeGen will need Phantomas and FSIST, which means I need to look at what I need from here. Let's look at the packages. Uh, FSIST. Uh, where is Phantomas? Oh, maybe Phantomas is an um, maybe Phantomas is a, a dependency. Let's try it out. So .NET add package. Uh, no, fs ist, and I think the latest version is 0 0.7. <clears throat> okay, so it brings up also the compiler services. All right, I think that's expected. All right, let's open up the namespaces. Looks like I don't need those. Uh, open FS AST, open uh, Phantomas, maybe? Maybe FS AST Phantomas. No, I don't see it. Maybe the latest version did not include Phantomas anymore and I have to install it separately. Uh, that's all right too. Let me just look at the NuGet package. NuGet FSAST. So the, the version I'm using in Snowflake is 0.4 which is including Phantomas, but what version exactly? I want to know. So this version has a dependency on Phantomas. This one. Uh, okay, I'll just install this one instead, so... Okay. install it separately. I'm guessing this is the latest stable version. I don't think I need the newest stuff. I'm just gonna output some records. Throwing shade on the debug haters, of course. How else do you write code? I mean, granted you don't always need them, but hey, I'm happy with them. Um, yeah, so installed Phantomas. Yeah, it's not just like the debuggers, you know, it's sometimes I see, um, I see people saying, yeah, well, if you write functional code and it compiles, you will know for sure that it runs. Well, that's not my experience at all, uh, because I've written way too many bugs that I could, uh, that I'm, that I'm proud of. Uh, way too many that are, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure some, some of these, I, I get where, I get where they're coming from. A lot of the times it, it just works uh, because for example, in F sharp, things work really nicely. Things are more or less predictable unless you could do something, un unless you know the, the, the foot guns, right? So if you say X is unbox, uh, X is an integer, and try to unbox that from units. Uh, no, from units. Or from a string. This, well, this compiles. This compiles just fine. Except that this will, uh, Unbox is strongly typed value. This will fail. This will have a runtime exception. So yeah, these exist in F# -sharp and Haskell. Um, you just have to be wary about them. 
but the yeah, functional code will not always be correct. You have to actually make it correct. All right. Um, yeah, let's open up Phantomas. I have FSIST and let's let's make some types from here. So again, I'll just look into uh, CodeGen. That's the module here. Uh, let's see attributes. Don't care about the attributes. Enum type, not now. Well, actually, I might need enum type. Uh, I might need that for later. These are already included. Sin record field, yeah. I'm not sure if it has those. So let me just add a bunch of extensions here. Uh, module extensions auto open don't don't do this at home uh, sin type what else the documentation yeah yeah so we'll need to build a bunch of record fields Format a little bit. Okay. This is for the syntax record fields. I'll even make some. Uh, should I make? Uh, should I make imperative code with a resize array? Nah. I've already triggered functional developers already too much. So let's go. Say uh, global types. Global types will be for schema in OpenAPI document components and schemas do schema uh, dot key value. The key will be the name of the type and the value will be the content of the type. So let's make a function create. Um, object schema create a record from schema it takes a record name which is a string and it takes the value which is an open API schema right uh, schema open API schema and now it will tell me it doesn't work Thank you, the models. So for each one of those, let's create a record. The record name will be uh, the schema. Well, this should be is actually a key value pair, right? Schema pair, what do you call it? Nah, just, just schema. Schema key and schema value. Okay. And now we have delegated the work to the to this one. But we don't want to create unit, we want to create something else. Namely a record. Again, I'll cheat because I have uh, create input record. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. So for a record you need Glo so like generic info about their record the ID will be the name XML docs I'm not sure they're available from the description let's see schema description uh, I want to create the docs from the schema description but Free XML uh, doc create does not exist, which means I had extensions here that creates it. I remember adding those extensions back to FSAST, but I'm not sure I did that right now. Okay. Pre XML create. Pre XML. 
free XML doc. Um, it doesn't generate fields. I'm using a lot. I'm using it a lot, but I'm, I don't see the definition. XML doc creates. There is a create. What does it take? Wasn't there like an info panel or something? Create from what? Create from grab point? What is this? Okay, create. Yeah, so it takes a list of strings. Okay. We have one string. Schema uh, description. Uh, let's see. Validation. Okay, common syntax may be used for rich representation. Uh, well, do we need to convert that from common mark to HTML? I don't think so. All right, anyways, so we have the generic record info, which takes the name. There's also attributes. We're not gonna, gonna use any attributes. So you need the generic info plus the fields. Uh, plus the fields, which are right here. So you need to create a record representation and then, all right, let me just copy paste this. It's, uh, I think we could simplify the API a little bit, but I'm not gonna do that today. So the record representation will take this thing, syntactic type definition, simple representation, record, record. Yeah, that and it needs to create a bunch of record fields, which I have, in this case, it just it creates the message, but that's not what we want because we will need to take that from the schema. So for property in schema.properties, we need to create a syntactic a syntactic field record, the name of which will be the rec the property name. Well, I guess the key. And now they're all strings. I need to do something about the type. Let's um, let's leave it as is for now, and see how far we went to do. Infer the types correctly. Uh, this is a record representation and you create a simple type and there you have it create create record from schema will create a syntactic module declaration and if you have a bunch of those you could create a module because you have a bunch of module declarations which i have in here so global types will now be a list of list of syn module declaration from which I can create a module, but that module needs, um, let's see, this module, uh, create module, I think I also had some things for that. Let me just look real quick. Yeah, so I, the thing I like about this one, which I didn't mention as well, is that it mixes both, it mixes both, uh, F FS AST code with string with string uh, building. So I'm basically using um, a mix and match approach where it's easier to compute the record types using the FS AST y using like the, the F sharp code the proper the proper way. But it was easier for me to say um, to build the members like this. Because if I had to if I had to figure out what the F sharp AST should look like for this code. 
it was I think too much work so I just made it like this and put some placeholders in the in the string definition which I made out which I made my uh, client from it might look ugly but it, it works quite well so there's that okay uh, what I wanted to do is yeah after I have a bunch of fields yeah I've created a module declaration let's see how I create the global types because that's also in program uh, global global types uh, global yeah there you go so after you have a global type you create a namespace and then create a file with that module okay but create namespace comes from here is it is it annoying that i'm cheating from my own code it's not cheating it's my code right um, code gen create namespace yeah this is what i want uh, create namespace uh, maybe create file and format ist you know what i'm just gonna put those in here create qualified module format ist use program format ist is not defined uh, Phantomas has those Phantomas, uh, I guess, AST transformer. Well, it's not, I don't need the transformer, I need the formatter. So, do I need to create a formatter? I just want the defaults. Phantomas. String. There's a module called string. Um, okay. Uh, some string helpers. Uh, code formatter implementation. That sounds. Oh, there you go. Format. And it doesn't take the right. It takes. Oh, it takes a checker. That's. I don't have a checker. Format ASC. Config. What else? Format with. Format AST. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I need format AST, which takes. Uh, defines context. I don't have the context, and I want the default config. Um, yeah, that's a bit a bit unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to look into it right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to revert to using the old FSAST for now. What was it? Maybe I need some specific code from here. Phantomas? No, it's just Phantomas. Okay. Which means I need to revert to four, remove fun. Or I could just uh, install the one that I used to use in here. Uh, go back. take this one you don't mind having an alpha in your code right I bet you don't uh, format ASD thank you dotnet restore no cache 
cash, that's how you write it. Okay, dot net uh, build, just to be sure. Unless I have some weird stuff in here. No, I don't. Format AST is not defined. Uh, that's weird. Format AST. Uh, utilities. Nope. Code gen format AST. Yeah, it's only those two. Ah, I think I know. I think it was part of. Yeah, I think I just need to revert uh, this one back here. Yeah. I think format AST was part of this one. But okay. Uh, don't need to restore again. Because FSAST used to depend on Phantomas and then it was removed. Because it was just the function call, but now I don't know how to call the function, which, uh, which kind of sucks. And now it won't know what uh, what the string is, right? Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't know how to create these things. Let me see. So we have syntype type create doesn't isn't known what else yeah let me look at it so it is fsast um sample program format fs yeah, it, it, it some for some reason uh, it needs a checker and a create base class run synchronously. All right, what version is this? Update on Thomas. Yeah, maybe it was this. Do not format comments. Okay. Let's see if this uh, if this works. Okay, back to the good stuff. Yeah, back here and dot uh, net restore. Let's get the packages right. Uh, only format AST is not known. But I guess format AST internal, and this is what this will call. Now it compiles. Okay. .NET build just to make sure it works. I have the global types. Now I need a a, a module from it, which I have a function for. Yeah, you create a file with a bunch of modules and this is a qualified module with a list of declarations. Okay. So let's create uh, the module. Uh, let's generated module will be create qualified module. It takes a list of identifiers. The first of which will be the project name. So we want pet store dot something and dot something will be types. Uh, the declarations will be these global types. So now that's our module. And from this module, we should be able to format it into a proper file. So it wants content. So yeah, that's the module. Uh, Global types module. Code will be 
format AST from this thing. Okay, that doesn't work. It needs a sin module or namespace. Okay. Okay, because this is a module declaration. Send module namespace. A long identifier recursive. Okay, maybe I need to not create the qualified module, but create a namespace instead. So create namespace. Okay, it's it's pretty much the same. Yeah, namespace works better, I think. But now from the namespace, I need to make, I need to pass it into this one. But this one takes an implementation file. Okay. Implementation file. Uh, it has only this thing. File name is script qualified name of file. Oh man, so many stuff. Uh, file name, we don't actually care about that because we will write that ourselves. Uh, let's see how we do it again. I think it's in program. Almost there. Yeah, these are the generated files, right? Global. It's the paths. Okay, so we, there's a create file module name. There's a create file function that I didn't take over. Cogen. So many good stuff in here. Create file. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I need. Create file, which creates something file name and module. Do I care about the file name? I'm not sure I care about the file name. Especially because I just get the code and I want to write the code to the file system. So format AST, create file and create file takes the file name which i guess uh, will be well let's just call it the same name as this one test global types uh, format ast create file takes a list of modules okay Ah, uh, there you go. And now we could output the types. Print fn. Uh, we'll just console log the same. System console right line code. Okay, zero. Let's look at this goodness. Oh, it doesn't compile. Uh, let me see. Oh, I already had it. Oh my god. I already had it. Okay. Don't I run? Well, well, well. There you go. It's a recursive namespace, petstore.types. Because we said project and then types, so that's the name of the module. So basically this type is, this uh, file name here is pretty, pretty, uh, let's see, file name. Irrelevant file name. 
and another one here so we don't care about the file name and we just create a file from a bunch of modules and we format the code okay of course it's wrong because it's using uh, strings all over the place but that's a good start So that's a, that's a nice start. We get API response. You see, this is things that uh, Phantomas take care of, such as uh, that you have to have double quotes around something called type, like for, for any reserved F sharp keywords, I don't have to care about that. Uh, the one thing that is annoying in here is that I get empty comments, empty descriptions, so to speak. And that's not what I want. So if not uh, string is null or white space, is null or empty or, or white space, I think that's better. Is is not null or white okay. It is not null or empty. I'm not sure where this comes from, but I'll use it. If it's not a string, then yield uh, the schema description. And otherwise, this will be an empty list, in which case I hope there won't be any empty comments. Oh, there you go. That's, uh, that's much nicer short types get into a single row but the the longer the type gets uh, the the more specific it gets here so that's great that's really nice um, you could already spot a problem in this implementation because you might think it should be easy to just uh, okay now we have these strings that we need to okay, take care of uh, but actually the property value is of type another schema which means that the value might be another object which have to be defined into here so for example if um, if pet had another property which was of type object we would have to define it in here and then reference that object here on top which is um, not so straightforward for now so what i will do is when matching the schemas, I'll just match on non-object T types. So let's say let's create F sharp type from the schema, uh, which is an open API schema, and say match uh, schema type with, which is a string, I presume. Yeah, if it is an integer. When schema dot format is in sixty four, was it like this? Uh, was it like that? I'm not sure anymore. Let me just look at it. Yeah, the type is integer and the format is int. Okay, this is this format from the API response, but I want things from pet yeah the pet has a format of int 64 so when it this i want the sin type of long well come on yeah this is what i want when it's integer when schema format is int 32 becomes sin type just int, okay. Otherwise, actually, I want these to be the parsable ones. So that's a sum. Or for now, because there will be types that we can't solve yet. So for now, it's they're just default same type string. Nope. If I am able to write this string, okay. 
and now create F sharp type it comes here from the property schema or the property value which is kind of the schema so I could say prop property name will be the property key uh, property type will be well the value and create F sharp type from the property type all right that's the record representation that's our global types okay let's uh, let's look at it Okay, not bad. We have user using this uh, int 64. User status is taking an integer. Everything else is taking a string. Um, but yeah, this is... Uh, we're kind of getting there. We need to output this into a file later on. So this is the types. Uh, photo URLs objects okay so I want the next thing I want to co incorporate is for example the required property so this is an object where name and photo URLs are required everything else is not required in which case the ID has to be optional so I need to figure out if it's optional or not in here if schema is optional required so required takes uh, a list of strings from the schema okay so i i think i do need the property name here uh property name because it it is part of the required set let's see uh, create f sharp type property name and property type if required contains the property name uh, then this else it will be sin type option of sin type in 64. I think there should be a better way to do this. Uh, why is it only taking a string? Because it should... Oh yeah, of course. There you go. So this is an option of an int 64. Int 64. Yeah, you get the idea. Same thing for an integer. else sin type option of sin type int which is a function of course there's a better way to do this because I, if i could just say uh, let required is this one oh Required could also be a property here instead, uh, but I don't know what else I need for the property name, so it will just go here. If required, do this, other than, other than do that. Uh, so yeah, let's look at the generated code now. do infer yeah that's exactly what we're doing now there you go option of int 64 option of int 64 uh, we got the pets uh, photo URLs let's let's look at more complicated types so we are mapping those types here um, let's look at the schema so for example uh, this is an enum i won't look into enums right now but let's say okay tags is an array of other things so tags 
is an array of a reference. So this should be like a tag list kind of thing. Okay, I need to take care of references later. For now, I'll just leave them, leave them be. Uh, because it will require the the document as well. All right, photo URLs is an array of type string. Okay. Okay, we can do that. So if the type is string, um, when schema is array, no, items, Items is itself an API schema. Okay, when items, okay, this is, this is something very interesting. So when, so it's an array when items dot type equals string, which means you have a string of arrays. You might think, okay, this is very, um, this, this is this won't cover all cases, but that's how you start working with these projects. You just do it step by step. So I have an array of a, of a string. I could also do it recursively. So when I have an array, I will inner type the inner type will be create f sharp type. The property name can can stay the same, uh, and the schema will be schema items. And from here I return. Well, I still need to check if it's required or not. So if required. then sin type list of the inner type that was recursively calculated otherwise it will be an option a sin type option of this thing will that work because we're providing the property name as well to the items okay let's uh, let's let's give it a try we we should see string uh, we should see string array in the photo URLs for the for the pets. So the photo URL should be a string array. Let's look at it. Oh, it's actually optional. Why is that? Because I believe we did say that photo URLs oh this is photo URL no it should it shouldn't be the case photo URLs is an array where the items are this hmm uh, very interesting um, just a bit confused on how why ID can be optional uh, it's because that's how the API was made. So that's how this is how the API. Uh, I think because there are paths to create a pet. So there's a pet here, which has a create method in a post request, and the parameters is of type pet. So in order to make this work, they have to say that the ID is optional. Again, it, it's I don't think it's it's the same problem I outlined in the beginning. It's weird that it's very weird that um, let's look at the Swagger API. 
it's very weird that when you create an instance of the pet you have to create you have to give it the id because basically you shouldn't be able to create an id at this point where you are just creating an instance but the add pet operation takes it takes one and i think in this sample uh, sergey just wants us to let just wants us to know that you could query by the same id you added i don't know if the pet store actually allows this but it it makes for a nice example here uh second question can we do dot net watch run yes we can except that it will always regenerate this one here i don't use watch run a lot actually um i don't need to always see the results but let's figure out why photo urls was optional because If it's re array and this will be the items because inner type will be resolved to string and since it's required it should be it should become sin list but it's saying is not required so this is very interesting that it became uh, optional the tags are strings which which is also incorrect because they should use the references. Is it now using? Yeah, it, it is uh, using this one. Yeah, photo URLs are still optional. Uh, you know what? Let me just debug the thing. So I'll just go into here. Uh, debug. So inner type should be a string. Yeah, that's correct. It's a string. Our property name was photo URLs and required should be, oh. Hey, that's not right. What schema are we talking about here? Is it type array? Yeah, I think I will need to build something in between that makes a difference between a full API schema and something else because this match with a string, which is correct. Property name. Okay, again, inner type is a string. These are the tags. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm looking in the right uh, schema because this is yeah, schema items. Hmm. Let me try to use required from outside. Required is when the property type uh, required contains the property value. Uh, so required goes into here. And now when I recursively call it, I say required just kind of propagates the requiredness of the type so that it's always it, so that it's computed on a property level and it's passed down so let's see if that will work uh, don't let run does that make sense let's see 
No, I'm, I'm still doing something wrong. If required, then it's just a list of the inner type. But I somehow am ending up here. When we looked at the open API document, it was uh, it was filled with these things. Let's see. Maybe contains has a Okay, so I'm photo URLs. Quite how how can required be false?
uh, array type, not inner type. Array type is create F sharp type. The requiredness just propagates. Unless I have an object, in which case I haven't uh, dealt with that yet. Uh, I don't care about the prop. Okay, I'll just I'll just leave property name here, and the schema will be the current schema items. So array items type array items type, and it should be in here. Okay, uh, terminal dot net run. And now we should have nicer records. Okay. That's much more like it. Now we have photo URLs, a list of strings because it's required and the requiredness comes from the schema itself and not the property which was what was wrong okay so yeah this is uh this is uh, pretty much it for the global types namely those well not the paths but the schemas where was them S schemes definitions so in in v2 they're called definitions in v3 they're called schemas and we're be we're able to map the object and not everything because we still have to uh, deal with references which will be all right i guess and status which is a string of type enum so i have to check when something is a string but it's an enum and uh, do something about that there are, I'm pretty sure there are a lot more cases because you have a, an array of strings, maybe an array of itself if you have something recursive, if you have a recursive type. So this one is uh, a tags, is an array of a reference tag, so it should actually say it's an array of a tag. Hmm. So this one doesn't have a type, instead it, it has this XML uh, reference. So yeah, it will be interesting to do the rest of those. For now, I think this was uh, this was quite nice, quite quite uh, productive for an initial an initial video. Uh, I'm looking forward to see how far we go with this. It, it's uh, it's pretty cool so far, and pretty easy that you just uh, yeah, if you know if you know what what functions you need from here, uh, if you've worked with them a couple of times. They are fairly straightforward to work with and to create. Yeah, something, something as easy as a file with that contains the 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 common types. Except, yeah, it's not it's not finished yet. But yeah, we can do that next time. For now, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks a lot for joining. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'll try to get these videos up on YouTube soon. And with that, have a good night. And see you next time. Bye-bye.